Hey everyone, I hope that you're doing well. Welcome back to Back to Space. It is me. I know you're confused because I'm not wearing my shirt and my backdrop is in here. But you know what? I didn't think I was going to be in Arizona this long, but I am. I'm still here. So we are going to make it work, people. All right, are we ready? Let's go. It seems like with November approaching, we're all arguing with our family, friends, everybody on Facebook, our old religious teachers about political policy. But there is no topic that is more vehemently argued in this house other than should Pluto be a planet or a dwarf planet? I don't know if you know this, but the administrator of NASA, Jim Bridenstine, actually went on record saying he is planet Pluto. And just so you know, in my view, Pluto is a planet. I don't know if that's a thing. I want to make shirts and make millions off of that idea if it isn't, but I'm sure it already is. But I figure it's a great time to have a little chit chat about it. All right, so let's get started. The icy ball at the outer edge of the solar system was considered a planet from when it was first discovered in 1930 till 2006, when a global astronomy organization made it a dwarf planet. Honestly, that's a lot of rejection. So in this 2006 demotion, they noticed that Eris is bigger than Pluto. And until November 6th, in which astronomers got a chance to recalculate that. So honestly, there's a lot of cause for questions. So let's talk a little bit about the demotion and why it happened. Eris is about 9 billion miles from the sun at its farthest orbital point, making it about twice as distant as Pluto. Its discovery in 2005 ultimately led astronomers uncomfortable with the prospect of finding many other planets in this frigid outer reaches of our solar system to reconsider Pluto's status. So in this 2006 demotion hearing, the International Astronomical Union, I don't know why I said it like that, they were like, hey, we need to just agree upon what the definition of a planet even means. So they defined it as such. A body that circulates the sun without being some other object satellite is large enough to be rounded by its own gravity, but not so big that it begins to undergo nuclear fusion like a star. And it has, and this is important because it's going to come up later, quote, cleared its neighborhood, end quote, of most other orbital bodies. Since Pluto shares orbital space with lots of other objects out in the Kuiper belt, the ring of icy bodies beyond Neptune, it didn't make the cut. You know what? Once I auditioned for a play my freshman year, I auditioned for the lead and I can't even sing. And I didn't make the cut either. Pluto and I have a lot in common. Okay, let's talk about the case for and against our friend Pluto. <laughs> against. So the dude who discovered Eris, Mike Brown, he was like, guys, just trust me, this demotion is the right thing to do. Of course he said that. He discovered it. He said that Eris and many other Kuiper belt objects are too different to be lumped in with the eight official planets. He also said, guys, they're pretty small. Pluto is the smallest planet. Also, the orbit is different. This is what Brown said. He actually said, quote, it just makes no sense from a classification standpoint to take these objects that clearly belong together and pick one or two or a dozen and say, oh, these belong with a very different large plant-like things. A little sassy there, huh? He was basically saying that the only reason they ever considered Pluto to be a planet was because it was discovered so dang long ago. He also said, we have progressed so much further in our understanding of what the solar system is that it's pretty obvious. Duh. He also said that we can go back and reassess the mistakes of our ancestors. He was like, Pluto, guess what? You need to calm down. You had your place, um, but now, with the Kuiper belt situation, go home. You're not wanted here. Rough. By the way, the Kuiper belt is known to host more than a thousand icy bodies. So basically, Pluto, calm down, you're not special. Also, side note, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, I grew up Pluto with the other icy bodies in the Kuiper belt. I think it's happier there, actually. Pluto has a family in the outer solar system. Oh, Pluto, at least you have some friends, right? Okay, guys, so that's out of the way, but let's talk about the other side, the case for Pluto. Some people say, one would say, that the International Astronomical Union's definition of a planet is fundamentally flawed. 
That's what I'm gonna say next time anyone tries to debate me. Your opinion is fundamentally flawed. LOL, bye. Some astronomers were like, um, let's go back to this whole clearing your neighborhood requirement, as stated before in the official definition of a planet. Um, they think that that was so wrong for several issues. So Alan Stern, the principal investigator of NASA's New Horizon, and also he has a ton of other credits that make him a qualified badass, said, quote, if you take the IAU's definition strictly, no object in the solar system is a planet. No object in the solar system has entirely cleared the zone. He also said that this definition sets a different standard for planethood at different distances from the sun. Planethood, it's like motherhood, but for planets. The farther away a planet is from the sun, the bigger it needs to be in order to clear its zone. If Earth circled the sun in Uranus's orbit, it wouldn't be able to clean out its neighborhood and would thus not qualify as a planet. Huh. He said this. It's literally laughable. <laughs> what a savage. In Stern's view, a planet is anything of the first two parts of the definition of the IAU, the part about orbiting the sun and having enough mass to be roughly spherical without the clearing your neighborhood requirement. So not only should Pluto be a planet, but also Eris should be a planet too. And the award planet Ceres, the largest body in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, as well as many, many other objects. That's kind of the information I have about the argument for and against Pluto. What do you guys think? Should Pluto be back in the gang? Can he sit with them at lunch when everyone's out there? Or is he supposed to just hang out with the icy bodies in the Kuiper belt? Why don't you just guys, why don't you let me know? Leave me a comment. Let me know. What do you guys think? Because I care. I care about what you guys think. I just got off of acting class, so I'm feeling really great. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing well in this crazy time and stick around because next week's episode is going to be awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning into Back to Space. I will see you next week.